Hi, Peter Charles here, Fucked for Life, Fly Fishing. And welcome to my vlog that's a, a bit of a whine or a complaint. Hey, it's my vlog, I can whine and complain if I want. It's basically to do with the difficulty it is to find simple reels for trout and bass fishing. Now, I've talked about in other videos that you don't really need much of a reel to fish for bass or trout. You can buy very expensive reels if you want. I mean, I've got some right here. I mean, these are some seriously pricey reels. Uh, and I like fishing them. They're lovely reels, and I'm not knocking them at all. But the reality is they're not necessary. So let's look at some issues here. And what I'm after is the availability of a simple cast click and pull reel, a good quality click and pull reel. And let's look at some of the things that are going on here. This is a beautiful reel, but it's silent, okay? There's no click. So in order to prevent overspooling, you've always got to have some of the drag applied all of the time so it doesn't overspool. This reel has a disc drag as well. It has a clicker, but the clicker is not very you know, effective, as you can see. It just makes noise. Again, you have to apply a little bit of drag to prevent it from, now the drag is engaged, you can hear it. And that will stop overspooling. But when the drag is not engaged, it, it just spins. This is another one that has a, a stronger click. It will function as a click and pull reel. And it's a three weight size reel and it has a disc drag. I mean, seriously, do we need a disc drag on a three weight? No. So this reel can function without the drag being on, which is good. But you're paying for a drag and you've got the weight of a drag when you don't need it. It's more complexity than we actually need. You know, and if you ever got, you know, some crud or some, you know, nasty stuff inside that drag, that could cause you some problems down the road, especially if you put it away for a few few months without looking at it and picked it up again and, well, why is this sticky? Well, that's the sort of thing, adding complexity when we don't need it. So these are all click and pull reels. Some of these I've had for over 20 years. And they're also fairly expensive to ridiculously expensive. And they're just click and pull reels. And you say to yourself, you know, okay, uh, let's take a good one right here. Beautiful click and pull reel, not cheap. It's machined, uh, it does the job beautifully. That clicker will prevent it from overspooling. It's not a drag system like a dig disc drag, but you don't really need it for trout. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of fish have been caught in reels like this. So, you know, you really, really don't need it. But that clicker prevents overspooling, and that's really all you need. But you're paying a, a small fortune for that reel. I picked this one off of uh, a used sale. It has a lovely strong click. It's a cast reel, but it's been very, very well finished. This would not have sold for a lot of money when it was new. And buying it used, I got it quite cheap because it's a cast reel. Now, the trouble is today, if you go looking for something like this, you won't find it. Um, if you're looking for a reel of about this price point and this quality of build, it's going to have a disc drag and probably little to no clicker. So you're into that whole thing of adjusting your disc drag to get it to be just the right, to prevent overspooling, blah, 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 blah. And you've got more complexity. You have to worry about, you know, how easy it is to switch the wind direction if you want a different wind. All these things. You know, uh, I've had lots of questions in the past for people saying, how do I flip this reel over? Dead easy on one of these things. But uh, when you're looking at a, a drag that you have to disassemble in order to switch the wind direction, pff, I mean, who needs that? So, I mean, I'm going to be using this for smallmouth bass, bass fishing this summer. And it's all I need. And it's, I, I wish there were more of these types of reels available. Right now, they're only available used. Um, but, you know, if you could find a good click and pull cast reel for reasonable money, I mean, that's really all we need for trout and bass fishing. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a smallmouth bass run 150 feet off, off your backing? <laughs> no. So that's my beef today, that it's so tough to find a simple, good quality cast reel at a reasonable price 
that we can use for bass and trout and not get more complexity than, and more cost than we need. Cheers.